everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby. I'm with Fitness is Medicine. Today we are going to do a back focus. So we want to focus on strong backs. So there are a lot of different ways to increase your back strength. Um, there's a lot of different muscles back there that um, can contribute to back pain or postural pain. There's a lot of different areas that we could focus on today. I'm just going to do a general focus. Starting with a row. So the equipment that you'll need today is one band or tube, a fit ball if you have one, and that is it, body weight. So we are going to move into this. Remember to come into this workouts warmed up and ready to move. We wanna get those muscles warmed up, get those joints you know, lubricated, warmed up, get your heart rate up, and get your mindset ready for movement. Okay, so we're going to start with the row. You can either do this standing or seated. It doesn't matter. Um, standing, you obviously use a, utilize a few more muscles, quite a few more muscles. Um, but you could sit on a ball. Um, lots of different ways you could do this. But pull the band back. We're going to use <clears throat> both of them at the same time. We're going to squeeze back. Squeeze those shoulder blades. So slowly pull back. And importantly, remember to always start with good posture. So shoulders down and back, chin tucked. Starting here puts you in a compromised position. So you want to be in the strongest position that you can to start and squeeze back. Make sure you're breathing. If you are standing, you're in a little bit of an athletic stance. So your knees are bent, your hips are back a little bit, your legs are engaged, your abs are engaged. Supporting that spine all the way up and down. Nice and slowly. Don't let the band control you. You control the band. One more. Squeeze those shoulder blades back. Good. All right. Now we're going to lower down to the floor. So if you have a mat, or a towel or something you can put under your head um, just for comfort. But we're going to lie down just face first onto the floor. So if you do have a towel, you can put right here just to support your head and so that you can breathe easily. I don't have one here, but that's okay. Um, just put your hands right beside your shoulders. All we're going to do is just pick up slightly. So you're just kind of gonna pick your head up and your hands just an inch or two up off the floor. I don't want you to go into like a giant back extension. <sighs> Breathing. Keep that head in line with your spine. I was turning to the side to speak, but I want you to keep your head in neutral. Keep your neck in neutral. <sighs> Breathing. Just hold it for a couple seconds at the top. Keep your feet on the floor and remember to keep breathing. And 10. Good, small movement. That is not very much, uh, you're not picking up very far. You don't wanna go into hyperextension. You just wanna pick up just a little bit, working those back paraspinal muscles. Okay, now if you have a fit ball, go ahead and grab it. This one is um, as much of a stretch as anything, but it does work quite a few muscles. I want you to sit on the ball with your feet wide, and we're just going to reach side to side. So this is going to stretch and engage. You're going to feel the stretch back through here, but working on that posture, really good posture before we even start this one, and keep that posture. So if we have a tendency to be rounded shoulders and we're working here, you're going to have decreased range of motion. And also you're not getting the full benefit of the exercise. So really enunciate that pull back, pull those shoulders back, keep them back even as you reach. Even though it's a tendency to want to, you know, round, keep them back each time we move side to side. I'm shifting my weight side to side on this ball as I go to. If you don't have a ball, you can do this seated in a chair but it's gonna be the same movement. <sighs> Breathing, really reach, twist that torso. 
breathe. We're going to do one more on each side after this. If you struggle with that posture, really, you can sit, you can reset, and then go again. You don't have to continue, um, but you know you can look in the mirror and think, okay, how do I bring those shoulders back? Bring that, tuck that chin, get everything in line, get everything in neutral before you start. And that should be before you start any exercise, but particularly when we're talking about your back. Okay, next we're gonna lower back down to the floor. So I'm gonna tilt my camera back down. Hands and knees. So you want your hands directly beneath your shoulders, your knees directly beneath your hips. And we're going to do bird dog. So again, think about tucking that chin. So we've got a neutral spine here with your neck. I don't want you looking up or down, just keeping that in a good line, alignment. So we're gonna reach one arm forward and the opposite leg back. So you're reaching them as far away from them as possible. Hold it for two or three seconds. And then your next goal is to try to keep your back as flat as you can, like you're holding a teacup on your back. So holding everything as level as possible. This is working your entire posterior chain. So you're working your shoulders, your paraspinals, your low back, your glutes, your hamstrings, everything along the back side of your body is engaged here. You can also think about keeping your core, your abs engaged. And then also breathe, keep breathing. Don't wanna hold your breath here. I'm gonna refresh my screen. Now this one can be really challenging um, for a variety of reasons. If your wrists are bothering you, you can either do your hands like this, you know, be up on your knuckles, or you can hang on to dumbbells so that you have the ability to keep your wrists straight. You can put your hands over a rolled up yoga mat or a beach towel or something so that it's it's not so much pressure you know if, if you're more like that it's not so much pressure with that finger extension wrist extension those are all different ways to do it you can also do it um, on a ball with your tummy on a ball and then it's not quite so much pressure on your wrists you're just balancing more than anything Also, if you have shoulder pain and reaching forward does not feel good, you can reach back with your leg and then just pick up your hand. Or if one side is more painful than the other, you know, you can reach with one side and then pick up your hand on your other side. So whatever, you know, may be bothering you there, you can kind of accommodate and still do the exercise. If you need any more tips on that, Obviously you can message me and I can help you with that. Okay, now we're gonna um, flip over on your back. I'm gonna tilt my camera just a little more. Um, lying flat on your back with your knees bent, your feet flat on the floor. We're gonna do alternating knee hand presses. So you're gonna pick one knee up and try to push it away with your hand. And then, of course, you can control the pressure that you're putting on there. This is a core, this is an ab exercise and a little bit of hip flexors, um, but it's a safe way to engage those abs without hurting your back. And obviously, your front's connected to your back, right? So having strong abs helps you keep a strong back. It all obviously is connected and works together. And it's important to think about both. Many times back weakness originates in, um, you know, overall core weakness, but having those weak abs contributes to back pain because it, it required all of it to work together to be strong and decrease pain. So you can control here how hard you're pressing and make it easier or, or harder, but you're pressing your knee into your hand. You're trying to push each other away and you should start to be feeling that in here. Breathe. 
Let's do one more on each side. And hold it for, you know, three to five seconds, depending on how long you count. I just want you to get a good contraction and hold it each time. Okay, now we're gonna stay down here and do a couple stretches. Many times, um, back pain can also come from just being really tight in a certain area. So this one is called a figure four stretch. And you can do this seated as well, but just picking up and crossing one ankle over your knee. And this might be enough right here. You might feel it back in your glutes here, your piriformis. If you want a little bit more of a stretch, you can reach through and grab the grab that leg and pull it a little bit closer to you. If that's really hard to do, you can use a stretch strap or a belt or a leash or something to reach around, sometimes just a hand towel, so that you can wrap it around there and pull that a little bit closer and get a little bit bigger stretch. If that bothers your knee at all, you can bring it in just a little. And make sure you're breathing. All right, let's switch. So we'll cross that other ankle over. You may be feeling it right here. If so, just breathe into that stretch right here. If you need a little more, you can reach under and bring that knee a little closer. Again, you can use a hand towel or a stretch strap or something to help if you have a hard time reaching and bringing that leg closer to you. All right, one more stretch that we're going to do. Um, commonly, and I've talked about hamstring stretches before, but I'm just gonna use a ball to do this. You can do it seated on the floor, you can do it seated on a chair. Lots of time, low back pain can come from tight hamstrings, tight glutes, tight piriformis. So we just focused on those. Now we're gonna do hamstrings. So I want you to sit up nice and tall one leg out straight, you wanna sit on the edge of your chair or your ball and just tip at the hips. Think about leading with your chest until you feel that in the back of your leg here in your hamstrings. And you don't have to pull that toe up. You can keep that toe relaxed. You can kind of wherever it's comfortable. If you're feeling it a lot in your calf and you can't get it in your hamstring, then relax that foot and that will help take your calf out of that. gastroc. Importantly here, it's the straight back, flat back, tipping at the hips, because if you're rounded, it's hard to get a good stretch there. It's hard to lean forward and feel that posture. Pull that, pull those shoulders back, just tip at the hips and lean forward. Breathe. You want to hold these stretches for about 30 seconds, because it takes about that, it takes um, 10 to 15 seconds for that muscle to start to relax into that stretch. And so you wanna hold it after it starts to relax into it. Sometimes, many times when we start to stretch, the muscle kind of guards against it, and then it will start to relax. And if you really pay attention, you can kind of feel that where it's like, oh, okay. Then it's starting to let that stretch happen. Okay, all right, go through these. Even if you just go through these once, you could do them once or twice a week. If you do struggle with posture and back pain um, and these stretches, you can do any time. You can do them two or three times a day if they feel um, like they're helping. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to message me or leave a message in the comments um, and then Go through these a couple times if you want. If they feel like they felt really good, maybe just go through them once and maybe try them again later in the day. Or like I said, make them part of your regular routine a couple times a week. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great workout and we'll see you next time.